we are all familiar with exothermic reactions, ones that give out heat. Fire in all its forms is an example we all know. Here is a well-known demonstration called the whoosh bottle. A small amount of ethanol is put into a large container and shaken around to evaporate it and allow the vapour to mix with the air. When a flame is introduced at the top, the ethanol air mixture ignites and burns rapidly with a characteristic whooshing sound. Similarly, if you fill a balloon with hydrogen and apply a flame, it burns rapidly to produce a large amount of heat, leaving just water. Rather more spectacular is the thermite reaction. This is a simple displacement reaction. Iron oxide reacts with aluminium powder to give aluminium oxide and iron metal. The reaction is extremely exothermic and is used industrially to produce molten iron in remote locations, things like welding railway lines. Endothermic reactions, however, are less familiar. These are reactions that require heat from their surroundings in order to proceed. They are not uncommon, but nearly all of them have to have heat applied to make them go. There are a few exothermic reactions, however, that will take place spontaneously and absorb the heat they need from their surroundings, causing them to cool down. This example involves the mixing together of solid barium hydroxide with solid ammonium thiocyanate. Within a few seconds of mixing, you can see that the reaction mixture is well below zero, down to below minus 20 degrees Celsius, in fact. It's so cold that if you place the beaker with the mixture on a watch glass with a small amount of water in, the chill of the mixture is enough to cause the water to freeze and stick the beaker to the watch glass. 